This is a part of the creation art series. It's the fourth video. Find the rest of the video on our playlist creation series. On the last video, we made a craft for the sky, which was created on the second day. On the first day, God created light. To create the craft for each day, find them on the description below. Let's now move on to what God created on the next day, the third day. Genesis 1 verses 9 to 13 Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered together, so the dry land will appear. And it happened. God named the dry land earth. He named the water that was gathered together seas. God saw that this was good. Then God said, Let the earth produce plants. Some plants will make grain for seeds. Others will make fruit with seeds in it. Every seed will produce more of its own kind of plant. And it happened. The earth produced plants. Some plants had grain for seeds. The trees made fruit with seeds in it. Each seed grew its own kind of plant. God saw that all this was good. Evening passed, and morning came. This was the third day. That's why today, we'll be creating a 3D layered map of the world. There will be two ways in which we will do this. You can choose to do either one of them, or both of them, like I will be doing. For the first method, Let's prepare pencil, scissors, glue or double-sided tape, colored art papers, cardboard, pieces of cardboard, print out guides or a map of the world, or you can just have an image of it on your computer screen to help you out. Our main printout guides are for a size A4 paper. The measurement for the A4 size paper is 8 and 1 fourth inch by 11 and 3 fourth inch or 210 millimeter by 297 millimeter that's a lot of number to remember but you can actually just buy the a4 size paper now print the guides and the link is in the description if you don't have a printer just pause the screen and try to copy the shape of the world as much as possible. Observe the guide. There are several outlines that go smaller as it moves to the center. But since we want to make it easier for you, that's why you'll find that we've divided each printout by continent. And it's already separated into sizes, from the main shape to the smallest. Notice that there will be a small number in each shape. It will be numbered from 1 to 6. The smallest shape will have none because it will go to the top. You can choose different colors for each continent like I did. Among the guides, you'll find the one labeled 3D Layered Map Guide Base. It will have the base shapes and the placement of each continent. It's better to print this on a blue art paper so the color of the water is already ready for us. We need to attach the base guide to our cardboard. Remember the size of our board and guides are all in A4 paper. You can use a double-sided tape or glue to secure them together. Some prefer the tape because they won't need to wait for the glue to dry, but I'll be using the glue because I think I work faster with it. We will now be cutting and gluing at the same time. So gather all your cardboard pieces and we'll be kneading them. Get your scissors because we'll start cutting our pieces. Just make sure that you are careful when you use it. Ask an adult to help you out. Remember I told you that each shape has a number. That means we have to start with number one. Find the shape in the continent that has the number one. I'm starting with North America here. 
Once you've done cutting the first shape, find where it is situated in the base block. Cut a piece of cardboard and glue it at the back. We'll then glue it to the base block. When we do this, we are elevating each pieces and we'll get the layered effect that we want. We will do this for each piece. You can continue by cutting all the number one shapes, then placing them on the map so you can clearly see the main colors of each continent. However, in my case, I think it's better to just finish one continent at a time so I can clearly see the layered effect immediately. Going back to North America, our next piece is the shape with the number two. Don't forget to put a cardboard on each shape. After doing so, you need to stack it on top of the previous one. Just make sure that it's centered. Continue to do this method until you reach the piece that has no number in it. Our continents usually have 7 pieces, so the 7th one doesn't have any number. Let's see how it turned out. Looks great! You'll be seeing little pieces like this or even smaller ones. If you think that you can't glue any more cardboard on its back, just put them on top of the previous one. This one's here of even smaller pieces. Don't worry, I've already remedied the printouts for you. I've combined the smaller pieces. What you need to do is just cut them and stick a cardboard at the back. It was only when I was cutting the smaller shapes that I realized that they were way too small. It was hard even for my small hands. That's why I just glued them on top of the previous one and used my scissors to align them in place. Continue to do this until you have all the pieces placed on your base map. Patience is the key. Play a nice background sound as you cut away. Listen to podcast or an audiobook while you do this. Or you can just enjoy the quietness and ponder on God's goodness, love, and mercy. Clean up your map, see if there are anything that got stuck there, and remove it. All our hard work paid off. See how colorful and beautiful our map is. This is the first method. This is the easier method. All you need to do is print, cut, 
and layer them with glue and cardboard. For our older audience and those who have a lot of patience or just someone who wants a more challenging project, the second method is for you. For the second method, we'll need cardboards, lots and lots of cardboards, pencil, scissors or cutter, glue, brush, paints. I'll be using acrylic paints here. If you don't have any, use your watercolors instead. Two cups of water, tissue or washcloth, print out guides or map of the world. We need to do first is prepare our base. I'll be using the bigger guys for this meaning. They should be the size of two A4 paper, which technically is called A3. If you have it, just lay them side by side on your board and trace them out. Then cut them. If not, that's okay. Just use the A3 size to measure your cardboard. 11.7 inch by 16.5 inch or 297 millimeter by 420 millimeter you can also use too long or legal paper as a guide if you're having a hard time with the measurement just ask an adult to measure and mark it for you the guides for this method come in three parts this is to make sure that we've covered all the continents right. What we need to do is to combine the guides, align each part. Africa and Europe should be displayed completely. When you find where it connects with the other two printouts, take note of that. Cut the rest of the second printout like so. Make sure it is aligned. Combine them with glue or tape. I'll be using tape so that I don't have to wait for the glue to dry. Do the same for the remaining guide. Our guides fit our base cardboard nicely. Now that we have our guide ready, observe that the shapes get smaller as we go along. But we have our main shapes that we need to help us know where each continent should go. Get your pencil and begin tracing them on the base cardboard. I printed out another batch of guides because I don't want to mess up the big guide that we already combined. Set aside the base board for now. Get another piece of cardboard and we'll begin the process of creating all the layers of each continent together. Trace the base shape first. Then right after that, outline it with your pencil. You have to do this right away or you might get confused. Cut excess paper to make it easier for you to trace. Remember to start with the main shape until you reach the smallest one before you move on to the next. Just cut the pieces that you already did so as not to get confused when you're tracing the rest of the smaller shapes. Continue to do this for the rest. You know, you don't have to do this project in just one sitting. You can start this today and get back at it tomorrow. You can also do a little by little a day. Or you can start it now and come back for it later. I know that most of us would want to see the result right away. But a lot of good things take time. You know, you don't have to be in a hurry for the destination. You can enjoy the journey, enjoy the process of creating. And know that even during this time, God is teaching you something, and He is transforming you. And that is what I did. I got into a good stopping point and continued this craft the next day. And then the day following that, 
I just wanted to enjoy creating this project for you and not pressure myself into finishing it in just one sitting. When you get frustrated or impatient about a task or a job, just take yourself away from it and do something else. Don't give up. Just take a breather and pray. You'll find that when you take your mind off of it and not worry about it, God will give you another way to approach a daunting task or how to handle things His way. And that's what happened here. I realized that it was easier to cut the pieces and trace the edge right away on the cardboard. You do have to cut the actual shape first before tracing. In this way, you'll only have to trace the shape once. You see? God showed me another way, the easier way, His way. And that's what I did for the remaining pieces. And it was faster to do. I had peace and I enjoyed the process even more. You can do it this way instead of the first process if you find this more efficient for you. For this step, we can use either scissors or a cutter. If you're going to use the cutter, just make sure you have a cutting mat or a cutting board from the kitchen. Now, always be careful with the scissors and the cutter. Don't be afraid to ask for help if you feel like you can't do this. We will also be needing our glue, so keep it nearby. Get the map kind. Use the smaller one to know where each piece should go. Start with the bigger shapes first, then the next. We will continue gluing each one on top of the other so that when we are done, the glue would have dried out. And of course, we won't have any trouble finding each piece because they are already stuck together. This is especially helpful with the smaller pieces that we have. The North America is almost done. Put it on the guide to know where they should be placed. Continue doing this for the rest. If you feel like some parts are harder to cut with scissors, just use the cutter and you can switch back and forth. Use scissors, then use the cutter. Now that we have all our parts together, get the base cardboard and make sure that you have all the outlines ready. If not, just mark it again. Here is how our maps should look like on the board. Let me just put them here. We have our marks visible. So now we can really glue our continents on the base map. It's okay to rely on the big guide where each part should be placed.
Yay! It looks great, but we are not done yet. Before we get painting, get your glue first. We will use it to create the effect on the water. Lavishly and playfully put glue on it, they will look like waves. Once you're satisfied, wait for some time for it to fully dry. Have a snack or leave it overnight, and get back to it on the next day. See the creative effect it left on our base cardboard? Cool, isn't it? It's now time to get your paints out. Brush, two cups of water, tissue or washcloth. We need two cups of water to clean our brush. One is to wash the old color and the other to make sure it's thoroughly clean before we move on to the new color. If you have a palette, get that. If not, just get a plate. We'll be using it to mix our paints. Let's paint the water area first. Make a wash with the color blue. I have three kinds of blue here. Choose one and just paint it all over the base or some part of it, like what I'm doing here. We'll get a different shade of blue and paint on certain areas of the ocean. We're getting close to painting the edge, and I forgot something. Let's remedy that, shall we? Find scraps of paper to put under your map. This will protect your table and surface from any paint. Okay, now you're safe and set. Let's continue painting. Fill the rest of your water with blue. If you are having a hard time with those small edges, find a smaller brush. That could do the trick. Now paint your continents with the colors that you like. Use a smaller brush for this. It was a long process, but it was really worth the effort. The layering effect is really great. You can also use this as a bulletin board or mark areas you want to visit. We finished two versions of the 3D layered map of the world. But don't stop there. You can make a specific layered map of your own country or another country. Just follow the process that we discussed here. Look! I made a 3D layer of Japan. I put the printouts on the link for you too. I added the water effects here with the glue. In the third day, God separated the land and the seas. He also made sure to fill the earth with vegetation, flowers, plants, and trees for the creatures that he will create later. You can never really know if the earth looked like this in the beginning. Nevertheless, the Lord created everything and said that it was good. No matter what is going on around you in the world, God is still in control and he loves us all. Just look at John 3, verse 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. 
Wow, that is amazing. Thank you again for joining us on our fourth video for the Creation Art Series. Watch the others on our channel and we hope you subscribe and support. Join us again next time for the fifth installment. Remember, Jesus loves you, so keep on doing everything for His glory and honor. Goodbye!